Hello everyone, NadLab here. Today we're going to be making this uh, simple uh, 3D scene where we have a cube which can move around. We have these boxes which we can stand on, floors, walls, and even a little bit of a ramp. Of course lights, and um, by the end of this tutorial you'll be able to make something similar to this. I can't guarantee you'll have the exact same textures, but I'll make sure to explain all of that as we go. So just before we begin, uh, just a quick tip on navigating the 3D scene. Usually I'm over here in the 2D scene. But I've finally decided to go to the 3D world, adding a third dimension, the Z or Z dimension, whatever you want to call it. And uh, just a quick tip on navigating. If you hold down the left mouse button, you can just select objects like you'd used to in a, a 2D scene. But if, you're, but if your speed, indicated by this uh, bar over here, and the, the way you get this bar is by uh, uh, moving your mouse wheel. If you move too fast, you won't be able to find the scene. If you click the letter O, be directed back to the origin. And you can move around right now i'm at 5 5.8 units per second now i'm at 19 you can see i'm going a lot faster if you hold shift you'll go faster if you hold alt you'll go slower so this is me holding alt this is me without alt 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 on alt off uh this is regular this is with shift you can see that there's some difference and that's about it everything else is practically the same as the 2d scene where you have all your scripts and nodes and stuff but you can see these are all red instead of having the Instead of having the purple ones from before. Now let's get into actually building this stuff. Before we begin, I want to introduce two pieces of terminology. One is albedo and one is normal map. These are basically your best friends. And if you're going to do any sort of basic 3D work, this is what you're going to need to know. So if you can remember, this this block used to be a marble block. And you can see how there's like a very faint line right here indicating where the marble cross used to be. If I go over here into the static body, which is what the marble block was. And you can see we have albedo and normal map. The normal map basically tells you how a shadow will map onto an object. If you go, if I go over here to my assets, you can see I have a difference and I have a normal map. I don't know why the website I got these textures from called it difference, but difference is basically albedo. It's the color. It's what allows you to see the block. So if I go back to the base world, you can see it looks, it makes, it looks and makes a lot more sense to call this a marble block. But if I go back to my static body scene. You can see if I get rid of this, oops, no, if I get rid of it and I go back, you can see that there's just something missing. There's like, and yes, you can see how there's um, a bit of a um, difference here. That's because the texture isn't mapped properly. If you ever, if you don't know how to fix this, I mean, you can just rotate it until you find the side that actually works. That's one way to fix it. There we go. Now it looks a little bit better. Just some problem solving strategies there. And if you, you can see that once I get rid of this, it just looks like a regular white block. And that's what I'm going to be starting with because that's just what everyone has by default. No one has these in Godot. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling and get right onto it. So, um, how do you make the scene? Well, of course, you would start with your spatial node. Uh, spatial is just equivalent to the node 2D. Then you would, or at least in Godot 4.0, I believe it's going to be called a node 3D. I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm pretty sure they're having a big renaming scheme. So if you're watching this outside of Godot, 3.2.2 stable or at least in a different version of Godot like Godot 4 or Godot 2. I'm not sure what they call it but uh, just try to look for the red circle. I'm pretty sure they'll keep the red circle. Then we have a kinematic body 2D which is a player. We have a camera. Make sure you set it to current and the way I got the camera into this position or at least the way I knew how to get it to this position was by uh, clicking control alt 2. If you think that's a bit too complex you can click view and you can just click two viewports. Make sure this one's a bit bigger and until you can see the yellow lines and you can still edit this one over here and you can see if I do this, I can see how the camera will react and I can place it into a really nice position just a little bit above the floor and make sure I can still see a bit of the roof. Make sure just move around on the left hand side. Make sure I can see both sides. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me just here. And yeah, that's how you position your camera. If you want to go back, just click control one. You can click control two for a uh, Horizontal split, uh, control three, four, right, etc. Uh, you can only have four viewports open, but now let's get into building the player. So we're basically going to be taking a 2D platformer and making it 3D. The way we're going to be making the player is by using a kinematic body. And it doesn't say kinematic body 3D, although it would make sense if it did. And then we're going to be using a closing shape which with a box shape. And then we're going to be using a mesh instance. And for the mesh instance, you want to make sure you have... Um, uh, cube selected and make sure for your collision shape you also have cube selected uh, if you have something else it will be a little bit harder to work with 
Anyway, we're going to go over to our player script and to add a script to the player, you're going to click this uh, green paper. You're going to click the white paper with the green plus sign. You're going to click create, and we're going to start off with three uh, with four variables: gravity, a jump speed, a speed, and then a direction y. Uh, it will become apparent why we need a direction y later on. Then we're going to set up a basic di um, direction uh, script where where we are going to be creating a variable called direction, setting it equal to vector 3.0 every single frame, because we don't want our previous directions to affect our future directions. We're just going to set up a couple of buttons. So if we go to the input map, we're going to set up a simple um, input map where left is A, right is D, W is forwards, S is backwards, and jump is the space bar. Then we're going to say that the the, the Z or Z direction is going to be equal to the get action strength backwards subtract forwards. And you might be wondering, is not going to make us move the other way? Or at least, um, is it going to make us move backwards first? Well, yes, it's going to make you move backwards, but Godot counts the positive Z direction as uh, backwards and the forward Z direction as negative. It's a little confusing. I don't know why it's like this, but it's what we got to do. Unless you want to go edit the C++ code, um, be my guest. Then we have direction.z. Then we have direction dot x, and it just occurred to me that I never explained what a vector three is. A vector three is exactly like a vector two, except now we have x, y, z. In a vector two, we have a x and a y. That's it. Then over here in our x direction, we're just going to make sure uh, we move right when we click right and left when we click left. And if I go over here, if um, this is the x direction, the red line is the x direction. Left would be negative, right would be positive. So that's exactly what happens here. Uh, we get a we return a one if it's uh, we're clicking the right button, and we return a negative one because zero minus one. Uh, this uh, this expression eva essentially evaluates down to zero minus one if you're clicking a. It, re it evaluates to zero if you're clicking both, and it evaluates to one if you're clicking the right button. So you move in that direction. And if we run the scene, you can see nothing happens. And why is that? Because we never did anything to move. We're just saying direction should be set in this way. Uh, next, we're going to just make sure our directions are normalized, and we're going to multiply them by speed. The reason we want to normalize it is because of Pythagorean's theorem. And now we're going to be applying gravity to our player. So if the player is not on the floor, uh, direction y plus equals gravity, and that will make it accelerate as it stays in the air, giving that nice uh, easing effect. So if we just run the scene... And if we see quickly enough, nothing happens because we're actually not moving and sliding by dir y. So what happens is we have to say dir dot y is equal to dir y. And if you're wondering, and you can obviously change this. So let's just say this is, um, I guess, uh, y velocity or y direction, you can say. Because, and I'll explain why we have to declare it outside the um, physics process function in a bit. And you can see that our player is now on the floor and it can move. Uh, all the time. Yeah, there we go. Everything's working perfectly fine. The reason we have to declare it outside of the physics process function is because if we declare it inside the physics process function, we won't get what we want. Or at least, we get what we want, but when we include the jump value, which is literally if we clicked, if we just pressed a jump, then uh, the y direction is going to be equal to our jump speed. Uh, you can see what will happen. We get this... Uh, really weird it's a really disgusting effect where it just glitches up to the top so if we bring it outside you'll see that uh, we get a lot more smooth effects where we can just jump around like it was real life and why why does it matter where this uh, line of code is placed in the script that's because if we place it in here you, you saw um, if we place it in here then it will continuously be set back to zero we don't want that we want the previous y direction to influence where it's going to go unlike with the uh, x and y, x and z direction so i hope that's a clear explanation if it isn't please mention in the comments and i'll make sure to clarify that and that's a really simple script on making a 3d platformer in godot or at least a 3d block game now how do we make these blocks i'll explain that as well so we just grab a static body and it's a little deceiving it's actually a mess mesh instance here so we make sure the mesh instance is the parent static body then collision shape. If you don't want to put it then if you don't want to put in the static body and collision shape, if you click the mesh instance and then you click over here to this mesh button, it will just create it for you. I already have it created. I don't need it again. And uh, you want to make sure you just follow this uh, 
of you just want to make sure you follow what Godot gives you because if you try to make it yourself, for example, over here when I did it myself, I went over here to a stationary block. I put the static body as the parent, which I usually do in a 2D scene. I set the collision shape, I set the collision shape, and then I set the mesh instance. And what happened was a little bit uh, weird. And you can see right here exactly when I put in this stationary block, which has a static body as its parent. You can see that I get this really weird effect where Godot, or at least uh, this player, has no clue what it's doing on it. But if it's a mesh instance followed by a static body followed by a collision shape then you won't have any problem that's another thing i wanted to put out there see over here we have a rigid body 2d and again i just uh, put in a collision shape mesh instance by myself and you can see when i use the regular block which is just a rigid body 2d yeah it works there's physics um it's not in time like they don't fall at the same time as this uh player does but the thing is when you jump on them or if you push them through a wall they will be able to fly out and i'm still working on why is that the case but i will make sure to provide an update once i figure out why they're flying outside like that now that's all i have to say for problems in the system and if you want to apply a shader to your objects you just go to the object you want to apply the shader to go to mesh you go to mesh instance and you click spatial material then once you're in, then once you're in spatial material you can click albedo and normal map just be careful, normal map seems to make Godot not respond and can possibly lead to a crash, so make sure you save your work before uh, altering this uh, normal map. Anyway, when you go to albedo, you want to make sure you choose the thing that you want. So I want old planks over here onto this uh, box, and don't worry about the color, look here, because that's what it will look like in the scene. Oh, It, it looks like a dull blue brownish box over here because there's no lights, even though the sun's right there. That doesn't count as a light. That's just for decoration purposes. Anyway, we can just edit, edit the color. Oops. Uh, we can edit the color. It looks something like this in their main scene. We save and we go back. You can see that on the side of the light, it looks kind of like that. It looks kind of like we saw up here into the preview. And if we go to the normal map. Okay, and I just noticed one thing. I was uh, explaining how to put on a texture map as well as the... I'll, um, t a regular texture and I went over here to my mesh and this was open by accident and I clicked material make sure you don't click the one that's inside mesh and make sure you click the one that has its own material tab like this is a tab for material make sure you go there and you won't get confused like I just did so you go over there drag your floor texture and you can put in your normal map for your uh, texture and there we go uh, we have a very simple floor and of course you can edit the color I just made this like a yellowish color because uh, it looks more, a lot more like concrete, or in fact, it looks horrible. One second, and now it looks a lot more like bricks on, or at least like a plastered wall. Now we have to fix the floor. Cool things about lights. Uh, I oh, I used an Omni light here. It's just a. It's basically like a large sphere of light it, it's, it doesn't represent the sun it's more uh, likely to represent a candle or some sort of uh, um car light i would say um i believe go i believe godot gives you a small description of what's the best thing so direction light is like a sun omni light is like a light bulb or candle and spotlight spotlight is like a um it's almost like a flashlight basically so yeah that should be it uh, just a quick tutorial on how to make a 3D scene in Godot with a 3D uh, player. And that's all I have to say for this tutorial. Have an amazing day.